today I'm going to show you how to install new brakes. Yes, these are some weird looking brakes. How to wire to video. How to make your own. How to make your own hard top part. How to change the oil. How to fix the light problems. How to install. How to do a complete tune up. I'm going to show you how to do that. So this video is going to be kind of a step by step install video on how to change your brakes on a 2002 through 2007 Jeep Liberty. But you can also use this video in reference for a lot of different vehicles because most of your brake systems, uh, primarily in the front of vehicles, are going to be relatively the same. Uh, the only thing you're going to run into is um, different size bolts and stuff like that. Um, and your pads and stuff may install slightly different, but you'll be able to use this as a uh, a basic guideline. I'm going to kind of breeze through this, but I'm also going to try to show you all of the information that you need to change your brakes yourself because um, it can be an expensive process if you take your vehicle to a shop and have it done in a shop. It, it can be kind of expensive. Um, you can save quite a bit by doing it yourself. If you've never done brakes before, give it a try. It's not as hard as you would think. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and get the Jeep lifted and then we're going to remove the wheel. Just kind of push your wheel underneath the Jeep. I can't, I guess you can't kind of see there. Um, just as another safety precaution. Yes, I do see all of this grease that is everywhere back here. Um, that is actually from a busted CV joint here that will be getting replaced, but that's not what this video is about. Now we're going to remove our caliper bolts because we are changing pads and rotors. So we are gonna have to remove the caliper and the caliper bracket. We're going to remove the bottom bolt first because I've went ahead and broke the top one loose so you can see what happens if you remove the top one first and then you go to remove your bottom. Your caliper is going to try to swing out on you. Now you can hold it in place or you can just kind of thread your top one back in. Make sure you get enough threads in there so you don't damage anything. Then you can come down here and break your bottom one loose. And then what I like to do is to go ahead and compress the caliper while it's on here. Um, I know there are a lot of tools and things that you remove your caliper, take your pads off, and then compress the piston inside of your caliper. But a little trick is you can just kind of leave this on here and do it while it's on here. Um, it's just, I think it's an easier way of compressing the piston inside of your caliper without having to remove it. You're still going to have to remove it, but you'll see. So what you need to do is take a C-clamp. You need to make sure that you have one large enough for your application. This is a six inch C-clamp and you're going to pass it through right in here and you're going to touch against the back of your brake pad. And then you want to find a good flat surface on the back side of your caliper, not the bolt that is holding in your brake line. You don't want to go there, but you want to find somewhere flat on the back of your caliper, like I said, and we have a spot right here. And then just slowly and steadily tighten up your C-clamp and you'll see that you'll start getting a gap here between your pad and your caliper. And what you're doing is compressing the piston inside of your caliper. And then it'll bottom out. Then just loosen your clamp back up. Get it out of there. And like I said, you have to make sure that you have the right size clamp. You just have to kind of figure it out on how big your caliper is. Uh, it happens to be a six inch is right about the right size for my application. Now you're gonna get a little bungee strap or some wire, coat hanger, anything like that. Get it ready. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and 
remove this top caliper bolt. And now that the caliper is compressed, the caliper should come right off. And then we're going to suspend it. up out of the way and then we can pull the pads out um, you don't have to but I'm just gonna go ahead and get them out of the way now we need to remove the two caliper bracket bolts back here and this step is only if you're changing your rotor if you're just changing your pads well then you saw how the pads came out they just come straight out and uh, you'll see how to reinstall the pads here later on in the video. Before we take those off, I almost forgot one little step. Um, this isn't necessary, but you wanna go down here and uh, take one of your lug nuts and put back on one of the studs of your rotor. Make sure you push the rotor all the way back, see how the, you can move the rotor like this. Push the rotor back and just thread on one of your lug nuts and that'll just keep the rotor from falling off and landing on your foot or something like that. Now we're going to take a 21 millimeter and remove these two bolts. Um, you can only see one on this camera. The other camera should be able to pick up the other one. This is where you may need a breaker bar or extendable ratchet, something that has some leverage on it because these things are going to be tight. And it looks like I'm going to hit the camera here. You want to be really careful when you're doing that because you can really hurt yourself. Um, so I, I, I guess I don't recommend using the palm method. Um, just a long breaker bar uh, would do the same thing. And then your bracket comes right off. Here is where you can see I was saying to use a lug nut to kind of keep that on there because it could have fell and just landed on your foot. I'm going to go ahead and take that off now. And then just remove your rotor. Now, it's not always going to be that easy as it just looked right there uh, because that was easy that it just came right off. Um, that is because these have been changed before and uh, I don't know if you can tell on here, it's kind of turned a really dark gray, but uh, I have anti-seize around the hub here so it wouldn't stick. You can actually see that I've got it on my hands. Um, I've since started using a type of grease. I'll show you the grease that I've been using um, instead of anti-seize because uh, if you've worked with anti-seize before you know it is a pain. That little bit that I have on my finger there is going to end up everywhere. So I know I said I wasn't going to use this stuff but since there's already some on there and I know there are some die-hard people out there that insist on only using anti-seize, what I like to do is clean the back side of the rotor before I put it on. And then once I have it on there, clean the front side. So you still have, you know, the front that you can handle. The only thing you have to try to worry about is, you know, not to handle the rear. And that's really all you need to do when you clean your rotors. Uh, you'll see, uh, if you're using standard rotors, you'll actually see the oil that they put on here, but you can see this came out fairly clean. So now you don't want to touch the back side of the rotor, but you can still touch the front. So now we're going to install our new rotor and remembering not to touch the back that we just cleaned. Get that on there and then we'll do our trick again with a lug nut. Now that we have that in place, I'm going to go ahead and clean off the front side a little bit where I've touched it and got some dirt and grease on there. So before we bolt our caliper bracket back on, I'm going to lubricate what I call the, the sliders here are these little metal inserts. And this is the grease that I've been using and I've had really good success with this stuff. All I'm going to do is apply some into all of these slider areas here where your brake pad makes contact and then I'll bolt the caliper bracket on there. So now that I've put the grease on the sliders, I do that when I have the bracket off 
as to keep from getting it all over the rotor. And I'm going to put this in place and I'm just going to thread in one of the bolts by hand to kind of hold this in place. And then I'm going to add my Loctite. I use blue Loctite on this. There are specific torque specs for these. Um, I do not know what they are. It, it, it is a lot. It's somewhere between 100 and 125 foot-pounds, I think. But for me, it's just really, really tight. Now, we'll unthread this top one that we started, pull it back out, and add our Loctite to it. Now we need to install our pads. I am also going to be adding grease to these spots here and then also here. You want to do that with any where that you have contact with the caliper, any type of metal on metal contact. And for that I use this same ultra disc brake caliper lube. Um, some people use anti-seize on that as well um, and there's nothing wrong with that. And here's a little tip um, when you're changing out your pads, when you go to put your grease and stuff on there, um, if you don't want to put grease all over the entire pad, you can kind of take your old pads and you can see where you need to put the grease. Now I have the grease on all of the spots that are going to make metal on metal contact. And I'm going to lean in here and probably block your view for just a second so I can see to install the pads. As you can see, they just slide right into place. Now we're going to unhook our caliper and bring it back down into place. And if I can get it on screen here and show you, behind these ears, that's where it's going to make contact on the front pad and your piston is going to make contact on the rear. I've also added grease on those surfaces. And then we're going to reinstall our caliper. And again, just like we did with the caliper bracket, we're gonna get one of these bolts started to hold it in place. Take our other bolt, add our thread locker. Come in here so I can see and probably block your view again. And bolt those down. These also have a torque spec for them. Uh, it is a lot less. It's, it's only um, some cases, I would say, I think I read somewhere 25 foot-pounds, not a whole lot. Add our thread locker. Some people might be looking at that saying, whoa, that's way too much. Um, I know that is quite a bit, but this is a, a, some really old thread locker. So I've noticed that it hasn't been working to its full potential. So I've just been using a little extra. So now we have our new rotor and our new pads and we've cleaned up everything a little bit and that's pretty much it. All we have to do now is bolt our wheel back on and torque it down and again it's going to have its own torque spec. I can't remember exactly what the spec is for a factory Liberty um, with you know the factory size tires and stuff because that actually does change when you go with a different style of wheel like such as I went from an aluminum wheel to a steel wheel. The one thing you have to remember when you change your brakes is once you get everything put back together, you start the vehicle and before you put it in gear or anything is you want to slowly but repeatedly pump your pedal 
your brake pedal that is. And what that's going to do is tighten everything back up because you have to remember you compressed the piston inside of your caliper so nothing's going to be making contact. So when you do this, your pedal is going to feel really squishy and go almost all the way to the floor. So slowly but repeatedly pump that pedal back up and it will be firm again. It is the same on the other side, just everything is reversed. So if you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Uh, make sure to go into my channel, check out a couple other videos. If you find a video that you like, hit the like button. If you have something to say, leave it down in the comments. And if you find a couple videos that you like, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.